Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. Today, I wanted to share with you a free fusion settings template that will give you this simple bit of motion graphics of a little five star animation. So all you have to do is download it from my buy me a coffee page. It's absolutely free, but if you want to make a donation while you're there, you can do that too. Now, if you're familiar with Fusion, you'll know how to import that and you'll be able to open it up, reverse engineer it and make any modifications that you need. So the rest of this video is aimed at people who are newer to Fusion and it's going to be a walkthrough of some of the options you have available to you on how you can tailor this bit of motion graphics to best suit your needs. So go ahead and download that free file and then we'll jump into the software and take a look at how to use it. First, we need to make a new Fusion composition. So come up to your media pool and right click anywhere in there and select new Fusion composition. This is intended for a 1920 by 1080 timeline and it was designed to be five seconds long in a 23.976 frames per second project. But if you require a different time or a different frame rate, all you'll have to do is go in and adjust any time sensitive keyframes in the fusion settings to suit your needs. Now we can drag that newly created fusion composition into our timeline and we will click on the fusion button down here on the bottom to get to the fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. So next what you need to do is find where it is that you downloaded my template file to on your computer and you simply drag that file into the nodes window of fusion and this will populate my nodes into your composition. Next, you need to take the output of this last merge node and hook it up to the media out that was already in your Fusion composition. So if you're happy with the default settings and how they look, that is it, you are now done. So now let's move forward and look at a few of the options you have available to you to start tailoring this to suit your needs. Let's start with something simple, which is changing this purple background color. Come and select this final background node here, which is just a simple solid tool so that its settings get loaded up into the inspector tab. Then we can just double click on the color here and change this to whatever we want. So I'm going to go for a simple white background. Next, let's change the color of the blank stars, the placeholder stars to be gray to better suit that white background. So I'll come over to the blank stars grouped node and double click that to reveal the nodes within that group. And I was using shape nodes to generate these stars, which require other shape nodes and a shape renderer to work, which is why I grouped those because it's four nodes essentially to make one simple thing. So grouping that just tidied everything up. So you'll double click that to be able to access everything within. Then we will click on the blank star node at the bottom to load it into the inspector tab and we'll open that out. Come over to the style set of options to reveal the option to click on color and then it's the same set this to whatever you want. So I'm going to go for a grayscale, a darker shade of gray and now we have these grayed out blank star placeholders that better suit our white background. Now let's take a look at our actual animated golden stars. So if I open up this golden star group node, you can see we have several nodes in here. All it is is two gold stars, a light and a dark. And these are merged together, one in the foreground, one in the background. And we're using a rectangular mask node to cut the top layer in half to reveal the bottom layer, which gives us this kind of cheated two-tone star to give it some lighting dimensionality. We can disable this rectangle mask to make the star look like it is a single tone of yellow. We can select the star left half node to load it up into the inspector, come to style and color to change that to whatever color we want. We'll make that a shade of blue. Then if we do want a two tone star, we can re-enable the rectangle mask, then come to star right half. And what I like to do is use the pick screen color dropper to match the color, then change the value to a darker value to make sure it's the exact same color, but just a darker shade. 
And lastly, for the gold star animation, if you want to change how it pops into existence, that increase in scale, you will do this with this last transform node and open up the keyframes window and you can adjust the keyframes for the size parameter. Now let's look at the sparkles. If we open up the sparkle group node, you can see we have a few nodes in here. Really there's only one sparkle. It's this background with some rectangle nodes and then we duplicate that out later on. So first changing the color of the sparkle, just select the background node in here, then come up to the inspector and change the color the same way we've been doing all along. The next fun set of options here is the duplicate node. And the rule of thumb here is you want to play around with the copies setting and the angles setting. And if you want them to be evenly spaced, just make sure you divide the number of copies by 360 degrees and type that number into angle. So in my case, eight divided by 360 is 45 degrees. The reason I've gone for a minus value is when there is a time offset, which we are using, that will let those sparkles generate in a clockwise motion. If I used a positive value of plus 45 degrees, they would generate in a counterclockwise motion. So there's a few other options for you there to use. And don't be afraid to play with the time offset slider and get a more unique look out of your parameters. And then finally, we have a few options on this last duplicate node here. And what this node is doing is taking those sparkles and that gold star combined and multiplying it out for the final animation, as well as timing that multiplication. The two main settings in here are copies and time offset. By default, these are set to five copies and the time offset is set in a way that the very frame that one star is finished animating into its position is the very frame that the next star starts its animation. So it's a very even flow of one star to the next. You can reset time offset to zero and what this will do is have all the copies of the stars pop into existence at the exact same time. You could do this to a less severe minus value than I had to have them appear sooner after one another or you could go for a more extreme minus value and have them appear much more delayed than the default setting. Then how about if you want to say change how many stars appear, say you want to give a three out of five star rating. All you have to do is come up to the copies option here in the inspector tab and punch in the number three or however many you want. And that will limit how many stars animate into place. And then the last thing I wanted to say about this is don't be afraid to go ahead and build on top of what I've done here. So for example, we can come in after that final duplicate node and add a shadow node to do a simple drop shadow. Again, just give the whole thing a little bit more depth and make it a bit more unique to you and your style. So there you have it, a simple five star animation template for Fusion in DaVinci Resolve and how you can change the settings to tailor it to suit your needs. If you found this video helpful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that you can see more content just like this. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video. We came to fight.